Welcome to Airheads. Coming up, the ABC of HFT Roger Late gets stuck into his new guide to the world of competitive air gunning. We have hot air, we have air streaming. But first, want to record 4K through your scope? We have the technology, and it's the only one in the country. You know, I haven't got a good feeling about this, Dave. Can you remember the last time Roy tried to shoot a squirrel? That took you about three months. <laughs> we find Darren and Roy in the woods killing time, as they're certainly not shooting any squirrels. Squirrels are Mr Lupton's nemesis, so to improve his chances, Darren is introducing him to the ways of the FAC grasshopper. He has brought along his 30-foot pound 22FX Bobcat for an outing. The courier's got lost taking some kits of mine, so we've had it diverted down to Roy's. Roy wants a new FAC air rifle, so I'm taking him out with the FX Bobcat, so you can have a play with that. Good friend of ours, Gary, on his shoot. The squirrels are eating all the feeders, so whilst we're waiting for the courier, we thought we'd go out and have a play, see if we can nail some squirrels with the Bobcat. We have spent a lot of time chasing squirrels, trying to get them within the 25 yard range. Obviously with the FAC option, it gives us that option to, uh, to push it out a little bit more. Darren is expecting a special delivery of a new piece of kit that caught his eagle eye at the EWA trade show in Germany a few weeks ago. Funnily enough, it is actually called an eagle eye, but more about that in a mo. First, you need to see the sorts of results Darren has been getting through it. Roy, probably best you look away. It will only rub salt in the wound. Back to staring at empty branches, and Darren has found evidence of their presence. So you can see where a squirrel's been. So why is Darren such an FX air rifle fan? Oh, I love the FX rifles. I've, you know, I think I've owned nearly every one that they make. I just find they're reliable, very accurate, and it's just a brand that I've always known, and I stick with what I know and what I trust. My favourite is the Cyclone. I've had the Cyclone now in FAC over 10 years. Um, and it just doesn't miss a beat. It does everything it says on the box and you can just guarantee every time you pick it up it works. And it is just deadly accurate. Um, the downside with it is, you know, it's a full length rifle, so what we're doing today, they just get cumbersome full, full length rifles inside a vehicle. After an hour of neck cricking, we are told that the eagle eye has arrived. Finally, we have an excuse to leave this pitiful attempt at finding the herds of tree rats we had been promised. Should have been here last week. While we have some daylight left, Roy shows Darren the other rat problem that needs addressing. These ones like eating his Hilux. They, they do enjoy the taste of Toyota. Thank you for that, David. Most appreciated. Yes, but, um, yes a very, very expensive taste in Toyota parts, which has cost me an absolute fortune. So, and also caused me to get stuck as well because they chewed through one of the cables which engaged the four wheel drive system. So I ended up very, very stuck as a result of ratty damage. The rat runs are everywhere and Roy has put traps down because he can't risk poison with so much livestock about the place. With Roy off feeding the flock, Darren talks us through the only eagle eye recording unit in the country. It ain't cheap, but it's a real game changer for all those people who are serious about reliving their hunting in HD. This is something that I spotted at Ewa, and I was so pleased to go grab David and James and show them. It's basically a scope adapter that takes the GoPro Hero 3 or 4 and using a system of prisms so when this mounts on the scope you're looking through your scope as normal and the GoPro is also capturing what you're looking at. The GoPro 4 has excellent light gathering ability so it means that this unit will record well when out lamping too. It's the first thing that I've seen um, where you can actually shoot in a normal position you're not looking at a screen you're looking through your scope completely normally and the GoPro is also capturing the footage. And also it's quite interesting that they're using some form of magnification because we all know the GoPro's got a very wide field of view. Um, but when we looked at it on the guy's tablet on the stand, the scope crosshairs and everything was a normal field of view. So it's all, all looking very good. And it's quite nice with the Hero 4, we can record hopefully in 4K and do some decent slow-mos as well. They've actually sent me a March scope as well. This is the 3x24 because um, they want to showcase their reticles, how fine and how good their reticles are, especially for people doing HFT um, so I'm going to quickly put the March scope, now it's turned up, 
uh, on a one-piece mount on the Bobcat, quickly get those zeroed in and see if we can get some footage before we lose this light. Here are some more shots Darren has taken using the Eagle Eye, starting with some sharp shooting. And here is a Munty wandering past. Do not fear, he was not Darren's target. This bunny was. I know it's not a very manly thing to do, but if you read the instructions, it's critical that the eagle eye touches up on the back of the diopter of your scope. And the whole of the eagle eye, if you undo these Allen keys here, slides. So if you use a scope that when you're adjusting your diopter to get the crosshairs in focus, it actually screws in and out. You know, it's imperative that you make it loose so the whole lot adjusts. But, you know, real time, that took, what, three, four minutes, David, to get that installed? Mm. Um, so I've now got perfect normal vision as I would so I can see my crosshairs and everything through this rear lens and the, the GoPro when I install it will also be recording exactly the same image so what I need to do now is quickly go get this zeroed and see if we can get some kill shots Left. The sight picture is just amazing as far as picture we're crisp beautiful 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 Sorry, I can't, I can't have a wonky cross here. It is cold and getting dark, but we attempt some rabbit shooting out on Roy's paddock. Darren points out another plus point of the eagle eye. Whilst we're sat here waiting, the first thing that I notice instantly is you've got the screen facing you, so you know exactly when it's recording. Um, you see when your Wi-Fi is on. Um, I've never had this experience, you know, using a camera where you can actually see. Normally, you've got it facing the other way. The Eagle Eye was originally brought in by the guys from March Scopes to show off the quality of their glass, but they were so impressed they started stocking them. If you'd like more information about the recording unit or the scopes, go to marchscopes.co.uk. We look forward to seeing more results from the Eagle Eye. Now from Eagle's Eyes to Budgie Smugglers, it's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. There are new stars emerging from the British Air Gun Championships at Bisley. Berkshire teenager Charlotte Huddert won two gold medals and a championship silver medal. She goes to Germany next to compete against teams from South Africa and Denmark. Meanwhile, three members of the Biddeford Target Shooting Club in Devon came home with medals. Between them, Michael Coombs, Clive Magson and Alex Raymond won four golds, one silver and a bronze. The organisation representing Scottish solicitors believes that the new proposed legislation on air guns would make them untraceable. The SNP has introduced its bill requiring anyone who owns an air pistol or rifle to apply for a certificate similar to a shotgun certificate, but without requiring the guns to be listed. Campaigners claim the proposals are draconian, and they point out that offences involving air weapons have fallen by 75% from 683 to 171 by 2013, the lowest since records began. If you want to live long in the USA, don't wave around an air pistol. New video released from a police shooting in Cleveland, Ohio, shows a patrol car arriving on the scene and officers barely hesitating before fatally shooting a 12-year-old boy playing with an air gun. Police in the video are seen driving across the grass to a pavilion and hesitating briefly. As the boy approaches and seems to be pulling something from his waistband, he's shot dead. The city of Cleveland says that the boy was responsible for his own death. Elsewhere in the USA, a similar incident was averted when a 16-year-old who was shooting pigeons was surrounded by a SWAT team. Do it. The, team was using a the unidentified boy was on a rooftop in Idaho Falls, and when he saw the police, he acted evasively, so they cornered off the area. Happily, police determined the teenager wasn't a threat, and he will not face charges. The US state of Michigan is to relax air gun rules. It's adopted legislation that will exempt air, spring and gas-powered guns from Michigan firearms laws in order to match other state laws. And finally, killing squirrels really works. Anglesey has become the first area of the UK to declare itself a grey squirrel free zone. A cull of grey squirrels on Anglesey was so popular that local residents got involved in shooting them alongside three full-time members of the European Squirrel Initiative. The grey cull started in 98 and has been hailed a huge success. You are now up to date with Hot Air.
aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Now we want air gunning to be as accessible as possible, so with Roger Late we have created the ABC of HFT. We start with the bare essentials. What rifle preparation do you need and what's it going to cost? Here I am with the new Gold Star. Oh, a happy day indeed. Right, what do we need then? What do we need to do with our new gun? Well, first things first, it's going to be delivered to you, or you're going to pick it up from the shop. It could have air in it. Well, let's have a look. It has air in it. So what do we do? We make sure there's nothing in it. So we make sure we're outside in a safe place and we just shoot it off. Guns are empty, lovely. What's the next thing we do? Do we put a scope on it straight away? Nah, not this one. What we need to do is clean it. Make sure that anything that's in there needs to be out of there. Lots of people say when you get your new rifle, get it out of the box, put a scope on it, ready to shoot. See, I don't go for that, to be honest, I really don't. They put a lube into the uh, barrel to stop it corroding, obviously, if it's an air gun shot for ages and ages. Yeah? You don't want it to corrode, obviously. So I have to pull everything out, make sure before I do anything at all, just clean that barrel, make sure it's nice and clean. Then you know you're starting from scratch and that's where you want to be. You don't want to be shooting 50, 60 shots and not getting a zero. What you need to do is make sure it's really, really clean. That's when the fun really starts. Muzzle flip off straight away. Or it could be a silencer, it could be anything at the end, yeah? Make sure that's out. Right, next thing we do, we cock it. We put the safety on, right? Safety first, we all know that. Lovely. Right, gun will not fire. Right, we need to pull this through now. We need to make sure that that barrel is clean. So how are we gonna do that? We need power pull through kit. That's what I use. It's uh, always in the back of the car. All little bits we need in there. Power oil, lovely. Pull through kit. Swabs, right. Let's go. Obviously, we need to get this down there. Guns on safe, so we know that's uh, not gonna do anything tricky. We feed that in there thusly. In you go. Lovely. Right, that pops out the end there. Can you see that? Right, okay. The next thing we do Place the gun down nice safe. All right. Get one of these blue strips and we spray some of this on it. And what that does, it's like cleaning fluid. It also protects the barrel, which is really, really handy. So hold it at arm's length or place down. Like that, a couple of sprays. Lovely. You can see now that that obviously has got the lube on it. Super. We put this through here. I double it up actually. Double it up like that. And then if you want to come around there, as you can see, pull it in there. And we pull that through. Pull it right through, squeaky squeaky. Lovely. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of dirt in this barrel. No problem. We're going to keep pulling this through until it's nice and clean. Once it's clean, we're going to stage two. Excellent. Now this is not to say that this gun likes to be really, really clean, because all guns are different, you see? They're, they're just so, so different. What I do is I clean the barrel until it's squeaky clean. I get a tin of pellets and I shoot that tin of pellets. Obviously, obviously in the zeroing process, you're gonna get through a few anyway. Once you've done that, once the gun is actually spot on, it will stay spot on until a certain point. And then when the accuracy tails off and the groups expand, you think, hang on a second, there's nothing wrong with the gun. It's just getting too much lead build up in the uh, barrel and you need to give it a good clean. Some guns take one tin, some guns take 10 tins, right? But got to learn your rifle. And that's one thing that we all sort of, you know, lots of people don't do that. They go, oh, I won't bother with it. Why is my gun so inaccurate? Well, it's because you haven't cleaned it. Give it a good pull through the thing comes back spot on again. It's like a brand new gun. 
Some, they say, some people clean after every single competition. They just give it a light pull through so they keep the same amount of lead in it, as it were. I personally do two tins, then I know it's time to clean it. It works for me, you know, see if it works for you. Thank you, Roger. And the HFT Masters Series kicks off on the 2nd of May 2015 at Lee Valley in Hertfordshire. Now, from the little valley of the Lee to the wide world of mountains and oceans, it is uh, streaming. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my fortnightly roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Let's start with the fun stuff. Despite the wind, the squirrel hunter is off to a new permission to try to reduce the number of grey squirrels. That's his job. Hunter's vermin is out after rats with a night sight viper. Usual top quality Northern Irish sport. This one from the USA makes me laugh. Every year around Christmas time, brothers keepers 111's kids like to make gingerbread houses and then shoot them up with pellet guns. Now the important product stuff. FX is a subject of several films on YouTube in the last couple of weeks. Air Gun World magazine has brought out an FX film and in Portuguese so has Guns House TV. This by Air Guns of Arizona is a visit to the FX factory in Sweden, an interview with FX boss Frederick Axelson. Nobody can accuse them of being quick on the draw, but two months late, Gamo has produced the film of its SHOT Show launch event where it introduced its own new products plus BSA optics and laser genetics. Now Air Gun reviews and straight puffs. American Air Gun Hunter looks at the Air Force Texan Big Boar Air Gun. Another from AOA, this is the American's take on the new Daystate Pulsar Bullpup Air Rifle. And finally, the Chinese coming. This is a promo for a new PCP by the little-known manufacturer Hooban Air Guns. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. This has been Airheads. Goodbye.